So, today I'd like to talk about <clears throat> a man named Bob. A uh, man named Bob Manning. Yes, yes, that Bob. So, oh, let me get ready for this because uh, it's not a happy one. <sighs> We're going to talk about the mayor of Cairns who loves taking bribes. Yes, yes, I said bribes. I know that the papers and the legal stance is it's an interest free loan, but I mean, the last bit of news that was ever covered on it stated that he hadn't even paid any of it back. So it's like, hey. it was in 2012 that he became mayor, and then 2013 he gets this loan, and then doesn't declare it until 2014. <laughs> oh, and the business that he got the loan for, um, Events North Queensland, uh, still went bust. Yeah, the, the company, the, the whole reason he got this loan to try and keep his company afloat, and the company still goes bust. While he's mayor, mind you. While he's mayor. Ugh. But anyway, um, this man named Bob becomes mayor in 2012, mainly under the premise of trying to get Cairns a light rail, similar to that that's found on the Gold Coast. Now, with this light rail, the idea was to have it running from Gordon Vale to Cairns to Cairns to Palm Cove. Now, we all know that, you know, when you look at the Gold Coast and the way they kick up a stink about certain new tram stops, you know that Palm Cove and the beaches and that are going to kick up a stink about having a tram going through there. That, that They just are. But, you know, having one going from Gordon Vale to Cairns would truly truly link up those suburbs and not make them basically towns that you gotta catch a bus for a couple of hours to get into the city. You know, it'd actually start turning us into a city like we pretend to be. But anyway, he won under the, this, this premise because to a lot of people it's a good idea. To some people it's not, but to a lot of people it was a good idea. And then, you know, he spends, he spends a year as mayor, you know, looking at his company crumbling. Spending realistically more time on the crumbling company than he is on his new role as mayor, um, he turns around and gets a loan from Mr. Singe. Doesn't declare it until the following year, and if I'm not mistaken, it was the uh, the following year that it actually started to go bankrupt. But that's uh, that's getting ahead of myself. We're still at the uh, light rail part. So anyway, during this time. Obviously, he's trying to get the light rail up and running as far as the papers are concerned, and oh no, the Chamber of Commerce turned around and said that we can't afford the light rail. Now, San Marino was the head of the Chamber of Commerce at the time. At the time. Now, San Marino is the man that Bob Manning and Warren Inch, our Liberal, our Federal MP for the seat of Leichhardt, would both come in and support during the state election. Mind you, San Marino would lose, you know, to Michael Healy, his Healy boss. Um, yeah, fucking... And yeah, Marino goes back to doing whatever the hell he was doing. I don't know, running beacon lights or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, yeah. So while he was, um, he's the one that actually gets to say no, right? And the thing is, right, is, is we actually could afford it. If we were to put money for it, uh, forward for it, the state would have, you know, would have put money forward for it. The problem, why the excuse they used was that the state wouldn't put most of the money forward for it. You know, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't basically pay for it all and, you know, have the council pay and some chump change. And, you know, that just doesn't fly for the mayor because he wants to hang on to as much money as possible because he's going to need it. He's going to need it to, uh, you know, quickly and, you know, quickly and hastily allow his friend who gave him the loan to slap up some of his buildings that he wants to slap up. Things that aren't really beneficial to Cairns, you know, like, 
Because people go, oh, it's a tourist town, hotels and things like that, and aquarium. Oh, that's a great idea. It's like, yeah, okay, the aquarium may have been a great idea as far as, the, as far as you know, getting people to stop visiting the reef and things like that is concerned. But A, location, B, price, and C, size. It's just not good. And again, like, there was money involved in having it where it is because it needs to be in a certain proximity to certain hotels that were also handled by the property lawyer, Ranjit Singh. And this is where we enter the property lawyer, Ranjit Singh. Really doesn't pop his he ugly head up until after the whole light rail dealio, you know, got turned down and everybody just kind of forgot why we elected him as mayor in the first place. And then, yeah, so along comes this Ranjit Singh. He wants to build these Nova apartments, these Nova City apartments, and he wants to bring in a bunch of foreign workers to make it. But he doesn't want to have to go through the usual council, you know, song and dance. And then while this is happening, he also decides that, you know, his mates are paying him a lot of money to sort out, you know, three optimal locations for hotels to be built. Hotels that you know, predominantly will cater to the upper class that uh, will want a certain other little things to make it more comfortable, like an aquarium and no bats. <clears throat> so the aquarium, we already covered that. They basically just picked a really, really shitty spot that was in between where these three hotels were going to be built. And then, yeah, they are uh, the bats. One of these hotels is right across from the library of cans right in the city and for yonks the big ass trees there have been you know a nesting ground for a native species of bats yeah like all for the native bats you know, roost there right I mean, you know have a jolly good time and then you know fuck off elsewhere after they, they do their whole night it's, it's actually quite beautiful seeing them you know is to see just and swathes of bats flying over the city at about six o'clock at night, just as the sun was going down. It'd scare you sometimes because they're flying quite low, like they're only about three meters above your head sometimes, but it's fucking beautiful. Like, and yeah, well, you know, people, not even people staying in the hotel weren't going to like that. It's like, oh, we're going to build a hotel bit there, and people aren't going to like that if they're staying there, so we've got to get rid of the bats. And so they basically set up. You know, these little speeds and all these little dispersal methods to, you know, and, you know, torn down a few more of their, like, roosting spots and whatnot, and to basically leave these two here is basically just like a watch them, watch them die kind of display in the heart of the city. It's really sad, actually, like, because, well, at a first glance, you walk past and you just hear a bunch of bats in the trees at night, but then you really sort of understand the connotations behind it all and you you notice you know the, the bodies that are falling it's yeah it's fucking sad like we're killing off a native species of bats because we want a, ho a pretty hotel that's actually crooked this is the other thing the first hotels that they built right everybody just thought oh yeah all fine and dandy but even the aquarium that they built is crooked They've built buildings that are too heavy for the land that it's on. Because, as you might know, a lot of Kansas land, even if it's not reclaimed swamp land, is still very unstable. It's not it's not hard. And right on the waterfront here, in the city, yeah, no, like, our, our most of it is, you know, a lot of it is reclaimed, reclaimed land, and a lot of the other is just very, very brittle, brittle ground. Now, it's... With that being said, you look at the one right across from the library, the green one that has all the metal panel things up on it and the pillars that are meant to make it look crooked. So the reason that they're meant to make it look crooked is because the building actually is crooked. And that's not a, it was built straight and it started to be crooked. No, they just, they slapped it up because they were, you know, money. And they built the fucking thing crooked. They put all these panels on it to cover it up. And you can still tell that it's fucking crooked. Now, with cans and the ground that it's built on, give that 10 or 20 years, that is coming down under its own weight. The aquarium, also crooked, but, you know, 
that'll just more have like structural problems with it in about 10 years time as opposed to just actually crumbling in catastrophic style however we get on to the one that's on one of the ones on the esplanade not the not the second irrelevant crystal brook that's just kind of just another hotel which kind of reiterates my point Cairns doesn't need more hotels we've got hotels now the third one on the waterfront the one that has the water the rooftop bar half of that is exposed like more than half actually like more than half of that is blatantly expo exposed and revealing the thin pillars that support the entire structure now some would say oh it's counterweighted this that and the other no i just call bullshit on that because the simple the simple fact is there's someone with a chemistry degree having a bad day could walk up there and buddy like a high school chemistry degree not a, like a uni one a high school chemistry degree could walk up there having a bad day and cause a lot of untold harm like not just the money or whatever in, in the hotel like the lives because it wouldn't just be the people in the hotel at the time that would you know suffer from that it would be anybody on the esplanade or in the immediate radius of that building as it comes down and that is one that, that is a genuine terror risk sitting in the heart of the city. And yeah, like all three of those, include and the aquarium and the Nova City, the property lawyer in question was Ranjit Singh. All of those buildings saw none of the usual council oversight. They were just kind of like propped up. And then immediately afterwards, the Bogan sort of Aussie, you know, Sydney slicker buddy bloke that's the poster boy for these hotels, the Crystal Book Collection, turns around and insists that Kansas Esplanade needs a massive revamping to become like a dining precinct. And then, you know, they put forward a bunch of money for that, and I'm pretty sure Mr. Singe had a hand in that as well. And they turn around and they barely do anything, the Esplanade. Really, they barely did anything. The Esplanade is still a long grass stretch with a beautiful fucking boardwalk. All they really did was, you know, where the road and the businesses were, put down some bloody tiling and whatnot and just make it look horrendous. Like, it looks ugly. It looks ugly. You knew you were walking onto the waterfront when it was before. Like, now it's just one of them fucking, you know, modern shared traffic fucking eyesore monstrosities. And the amount of times we've done that, like, uh, so the amount of times in Cairns that we'll get something that's a road and we'll turn it into a shared traffic zone and then we'll turn it into a plaza and then we'll turn it into a not a road and then we'll turn it into a... And the amount of times we've moved our fucking bus stop in the last fucking... I don't know, man. Like, because when it comes to all this as well, it's like, this guy's our man. And he just, again, $150,000 in his pocket is all you need to rule this town. You can build whatever you want. You can build it wherever you want. And if anybody critiques you, you can tell them to fuck off. Like, not even, not even the, like, because this and the Toowoomba Council thing all got shoved under the rug at the same time. The dude that was, you know, actually doing the probes and all that into it. You know, I had to resign immediately after all of this. And mind you, the last thing he did was turn around and flat out admit that yes, Mr. Ranjit Singh sent our mayor, Bob Manning, $150,000 interest free. And as far as any news or outlet is concerned that stopped covering it almost a year ago, basically at the beginning of this year, they stopped talking about it. It's uh, Up until that point, as far as I can gather, not a single cent was repaid. You know, in my opinion, from what I can see, no, I think I think every cent was paid back. That Mr. Ranjit Singh is getting every cent's worth of his purchase and more. Because that's what it was, a purchase. He bought our mayor. He didn't loan him money as a mate. He didn't even bribe him. He bought him. He just flat out bought our mayor. And it's evident in all the times he's completely ignored the, the due process of, like, you know, acknowledging conflicts of interest. It's like, 
people would go on and hey, you, you talk shit about Bob Manning in this town. People go on about his military record and his younger days and whatnot. It's like, that's all fine and dandy, but that's not what's being discussed here. What is being discussed is a man taking $150,000 and then using, using the, that influence, the man that gave him that money is using that fucking influence to destroy this town, to continue to destroy this town. To build it up into another Gold Coast while youth crime gets, you know, higher and higher. And people like me have to recant their statements about the police in this town because the police aren't actually doing all they can. They're getting fucking lazy. And they're getting lazy because they don't have to put in energy for it anymore. It's youth crime. That's the only crime that goes on. Meanwhile, we build up a bunch of hotels that are exclusively being used to continue the ice drug trade in this town. From the Crystal Brooks to fucking Ridges Hotels. And, yeah, like, the younger police that are getting lazy and complacent, that at one point were trying everything that they could and that no longer are, you know, they can't really do fuck all because the sergeants and senior constables and every, everyone else above them, all the detectives and shit in this town, are all in on the fucking plot. And I mean that. They, you know, because they, they need, again, they need their upper-class little hotels and whatnot to be able to do their drug deals away from the scrutiny of, the police that are supposed to be there, right? So the police can then focus on the little guys that pop up here and there and make it still look like they're, you know, they're doing something. That they're, you know, they are actually going after drugs when in reality, all of them, anything to do with government in this town, whether it, uh, you know, public service or whatever. I think the only, I think the only ones that might be exempt from it would be a uh, fire isn't pan, uh, you know, paramedics. I think they're the only ones that, you know, don't really have a, you know, a dog in the fight, so to speak, when it comes to corruption in this town. And yes, the next, next rant I do on corruption in this town will be going more in, you know, in depth with that police little bit there. But I just thought I'd throw that in on the end. Oh yeah, no, I, I hope the, uh. New video form is a little bit better without my ugly mug in the way the whole time. I don't know. Judging by the, the view counts, you seem to respond more when it's just the voice. So, yeah. Mm. Hope you enjoyed it. Next one's probably going to be a lot worse. Have a good one, folks. Fucking like. And subscribe.